pilot episode of Our Ideal Weekends. And what better place to start than in Manila, the nation's capital. Mabuhay! You know, I've always been proud of that term, Mabuhay. Because while the Italians greet with ciao, the Hawaiians with aloha, we Filipinos, we greet the world with Mabuhay. But interestingly, not many people know what that means. That's true. This is actually the best time to figure it out. Mabuhay comes from the root word buhay, which means life. Add to that the prefix ma, and you have the word mabuhay, which means to live. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. Hi, I'm Raz, and in this show, we plan to feature how we Filipinos have lived in the past. We plan to show you our history. I'm Jen. We're going to show you how we are living. You will see our culture, our traditions, and our beliefs. And I'm Tessa, and I'm going to show you how we live it up in the nation's capital. So join us as we share with you our, our ideal, ideal weekend. weekend. Manila is actually one of East Asia's oldest cities, predating even Tokyo. It traces its history to 1571, when Spanish conquistadors seized control of the city from its pre-Hispanic ruler Raja Sulaiman. This ushered in the huge Spanish influence in the Filipino culture, the most significant of which is the Catholic religion. Proof of this are the old churches scattered all over Manila. Our first stop for the day is one of the most famous churches in the Philippines. This is Quiapo Church. Every Friday, thousands of devotees go here to light a candle in supplication to the Black Nazarene. It is a life-size image of Jesus Christ believed to bring miracles to those who are faithful. So, According to one tale, the icon was brought to Manila aboard a ship which caught fire, burning the Nazarene. Still, people kept the image for worship. Every 9th of January, the Feast of the Black Nazarene is celebrated, and people flood this area just to touch the Nazarene or to have a cloth touch it. But the district is not only famous because of the church. Right in front of Quiapo Church is Plaza Miranda, also known as Freedom Park. And this spot in particular is called the Platidal Corner. It is the one spot in the country where anyone can say anything and everything he wants to say about the government without fear of prosecution, as I'm about to do now. No, I'm just kidding. Surrounding the church is a fascinating multitude of vendors selling different curiosities, including folk cures for obscure ailments. Na ang totoo. Eto na ang totoo. Eto na, 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 eto in the neighboring district of Binondo is the Philippines' version of Chinatown. It is where the Chinese legacy in Philippine life is best preserved. We are now in front of the Binondo Church. Built in 1587, this place is actually one of the oldest places of Christian worship here in the Philippines. It has sustained a lot of damages over the years, and now it is only that octagonal bell tower which remains from its original edifice. Various natural disasters, such as earthquakes, have rattled the church over the centuries. 
but thanks to the Catholic Chinese community, who largely funds its preservation, the church is able to maintain its glorious charm. It actually still has some of its original stone walls. But the most interesting trivia about the Binonda Church, this is where the first and only Filipino saint, San Lorenzo Ruiz, served as an altar call. The city government even constructed a plaza right in front of the church in honor of the beloved saint. Finally, we arrive here at the Church of Malate, dedicated to Virgen de los Remedios, or Our Lady of Remedies. The church was founded in 1588, making it 418 years old. It's been written that the image of the Virgen de los Remedios arrived from Andalusia, Spain in 1624. Its miracles made Malate a sanctuary for mothers seeking cure for their babies' ailments. An afternoon is definitely not enough to discover all the riches Manila has to offer or all the stories it promises to share. Take this whirlwind tour for example. The fact that there is a church to discover in every other street corner reveals the deep religiosity of the Filipino people. So join us as we show you more of that and many other insights into the Filipino culture. During the month of May, many processions are held in honor of the Virgin Mary. The most famous of these is the Santa Cruzan. St. Helena's feast day falls on August 8, but in the Philippines, the anniversary of the finding of the cross is on May 3rd, thus the term Mayohan. Hello, we're in Intramuros, the walled city at the heart of Manila. We're just minutes away from the Santa Cruzan, and in the Santa Cruzan, we'll be featuring gowns made from kacha. Oh look, I see two models here. Let's go talk with them. Hi! I like your orange gown, it's very nice. And this this barong is actually made from kacha. It's a simple piece of cloth. And this is Cromwell's first time to be involved in the Santa Cruzan. So how do you feel? Are you nervous? Are you excited? Actually exciting, pero nakakaba kasi siyempre. Unang una, first time ko tong masama makasali dito sa Santa Cruzan. And this gown has a lot of beads. And what was your inspiration behind this gown? Actually, I love designing gowns, dresses like that. Um, how do you feel about joining the Santa Cruzan again this year? Well, nakakakaba, na nakaka-excite. Yun, halo halo emotion. What does the Santa Cruzan mean to you personally? Well, personally, it talks about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And yun, para siyang precision na so we'll be seeing the both of you in the in the pageant. Good luck. The Santa Cruzan differs from most other religious processions because it does not parade images of saints. Instead, biblical characters are represented by women dressed in appropriate costumes. But in fact, it is not only the ladies that take part in the Santa Cruzan. Little girls are dressed up in long white dresses with wings to make them look like angels. The queen of all Filipino festivals, a Santa Cruzan is a religious historical beauty pageant held throughout the Philippines during the month of May. The festival commemorates the search for the Holy Cross of Reina Elena and her son, the newly converted Emperor Constantine. 
this year, the festival will be held in Intramuros, which was formerly the walled fortress occupied by the Spaniards. The setting is very appropriate, as the Santa Cruzan was introduced to us by the Spanish more than 100 years ago. This tradition is still upheld by the Filipino communities in different parts of the world. Today, the Santa Cruzan is a cross between a beauty pageant and a religious procession. The highest tribute that could be paid to a woman's beauty is to be selected as Reina Elena. The ladies are chosen not only for their looks alone, but also for their embodiment of traditional feminine qualities. The ladies represent the various roles of the commemoration. There's Reina Fe, which symbolizes faith, Reina Caridad, which symbolizes charity, Reina Esperanza, which symbolizes hope, and of course, Reina Elena, escorted by Prince Constantine. I have a confession to make. In my 23 years of living in the Philippines, this is actually the first Santa Cruz that I've witnessed. So what do I have to say about it? Well, I appreciate the effort they put into it, how the models designed and made their own gowns, and how they turned a simple kacha cloth into an exquisite gown. I don't think this will be the last Santa Cruz that I'll witness. Because whether you're in the barrio or in the metropolis, as long as it's May, there'll always be a Santa Cruz San. Intramuros is the oldest among the districts of Manila. Its name, taken from the Latin words intra and muros, literally means within the walls. This refers to the thick, high walls that surround the structure. Much of the old Spanish-era influences have been retained, but the old moats that surrounded Intramuros have been transformed into a golf course. A few minutes' drive from Intramuros is a whole stretch of seawall known as Baywalk. More than a century ago, Manila Bay was the site of the famous Battle of Manila Bay and this was fought between the Americans and the Spaniards in 1898. Nowadays, Manila Bay is famous for something else, its spectacular sunsets. In the mornings, it is quite subdued, but it quickly transforms into a popular hangout. Various restaurants and coffee shops set up tables and chairs in the open area. Customers can enjoy the view and the sea breeze. Some of them provide live entertainment. You might even find live mannequins who do periodic performances in the middle of the street. Malade is one of the 16 districts that make up Manila, the nation's capital. Its unique name is derived from the word Maalat, which means salty, referring to the strong smell of the ocean coming in from Manila Bay. It was one of the oldest residential developments, which has since been redeveloped into an eclectic cornucopia of hotels, bars, restaurants, and cafes. By day, it is a quiet collection of post-war architecture. However, Malate comes alive at night. Well-worn hangouts where everyone, hippie or yuppie, can kick back with a cold drink and a warm conversation.
first stop of the evening is Cafe Adriatico, literally at the heart of Malaga. The atmosphere is romantic and cozy. Its interiors are a reinterpretation of a traditional Filipino home done along clean lines. Right off Remedios Circle, Cafe Adriatico has been an institution in Spanish, Continental, and Filipino cuisine for the past 26 years. So joining us from Cafe Adriatico is Chef Romel. Hi, Chef Romel. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah. So, ano pong masasabi natin sa mga pagkain dito ngayon? Paki-describe na lang po. Language to pada. Mm -hmm. And sauté to butter, onion, uh -huh. chopped mushroom. Uh -huh. Gravy sauce. I see, I see. The food here is rich, saucy, and best eaten with rice. So, ito naman pong napakalaking <laughs> crispy pata dito. So, how do you prepare this? Um, boiled to two hours. Uh -huh, boiled. Then mix to onion, carrots, and celery. How do you get the crispiness so well associated with crispy palta? Yeah. Do you fry it? Fry. Or fry deep fry? Yeah. So, anyway, um, all this talk about food is making me hungry. So, kain na po tayo. Let's eat. Be sure to bring an appetite and a pair of pants that you can let out. popular destination for artists, expatriates, and everyone who wants to shake their bonbons. I'm a regular in Malate, and I've seen its evolution from a quiet strip of cafes to this. All I can say is, if it's a romantic dinner for two or an all-out party for 20, you'll always find what you need in Malate, where every night is more than what you expect. Right? Yeah. Right. I'll drink to that. Cheers. Up to. Wow. A lot. <laughs> you know, I for one haven't been to so many churches in one day, and it's not even a Sunday. You know, but you know what I found most interesting is the fact that even if I've been to so many churches, I didn't just learn about religion. I learned about the communities around it, the trivia in each of the church I visited, and that was unique in itself. Well, believe it or not, this is the first Santa Cruz I've been to. I didn't know what Reina Elena was, what Reina is, whatever. But it was very educational for me. And I also went to Baywalk, where there's always someone watching the sunset. So you can see that we Filipinos really love to celebrate at whatever occasion. I agree. Oh my God, I couldn't agree more. Because my night in Malate was, you know, typical Malate night. Crazy, fun, kind of like unpre unpredictable. Yeah. But that's, I mean... When you think about it, that's really kind of like what living in Manila is about. Exactly. Right? You know, it can be uh, insightful. Yeah. It can be crazy. But it's always fun. That's exactly. True. And I think that deserves a toast. Yes. You know, to our, our ideal, ideal weekend. I'm coming home. Coming back to the place I love. Love, love, love.